Well, I'm here walking. I'm gonna check out the target here. It's much better weather here. So I'm gonna go inside and see what they have. I'm surrounded by games everywhere. Everywhere, games. It's crazy. Yeah. I'm trying to find like Pac-Man or something nostalgic. That's what I'm looking for. I, I need to find like a, an old retro arcade somewhere so I can be able to have fun with those games. Just kind of bring me down that nostalgic road because that's what I'm looking for right now. I'm trying to go down that nostalgic road there, but I don't see any Pac-Man or any of the classic games. And uh, I mean, it's 2024 now. I was hoping I'd find something. Would you look at that right there? I'm trying to get to the sunset. There's a beautiful sunset somewhere. I'll get there. It seems greener around here. Today is Sunday, December 31st, 2023, and uh, I decided to take a road trip a little further south to be where it's a little warmer and maybe I'll see some fireworks around here because uh, there's supposed to be fireworks out here tonight. So I'm excited to see if I'll be able to watch the fireworks because there's going to be a lot of festivities over here. Very festive. And I love fireworks. I just love the whole, you know, festive thing about the new year this is very exciting so looking forward to that this is the last day of 2023 and we're going to be into 2024 now i did a video earlier today and uh i just didn't know what i was going to be doing after i did that video but i decided it's time to time to hit the road let me doing the countdown for the uh, new year, and I'm excited about that. So we'll see how the new year goes as far as uh, New Year's resolutions, because I'm definitely planning on keeping them this time. Doing my steps. Yeah, get those steps. I'm trying to get to that sunset. It's back there somewhere. And there's uh, trees up there. It's much warmer out here. It's like a different kind of weather. But uh, walking around here, jogging, walking, getting all kinds of uh, outdoor steps. It's beautiful. A lot of palm trees around here. Getting all my steps. I say it's probably like 10 degrees warmer here than it is back at home. That's a good thing. Just out doing my nighttime jog. Doesn't matter where I am, I gotta get my steps. I know I'm gonna see a lot of fireworks tonight. So uh, getting ready for that. But it feels good being out here, getting some fresh air. Yeah, I'm gonna keep on going. Don't stop. I'm surrounded by games right now. I'm trying to find something that, that'll bring me down like a nostalgic road. Something that's old school, you know? I'm trying to find where that may be. Remember these right here? They like Pac-Man. Gotta find a Pac-Man game. Where's Pac-Man? Yeah, I need Pac-Man. Gonna miss it down here in the south, or further south. Loving the uh, warmer weather down here, but uh, leaving now. Gonna be headed back home, so uh, gonna have to say goodbye to all the uh, much warmer weather because it's definitely warmer around here. Definitely warmer.
It's, I'd say maybe it's five to 10 degrees warmer. <sighs> I can't stay any longer, I gotta go. Gotta go, so this is it. At least I had a good new year. Man, there's debris in the road. Don't even know what the hell, what was that? Something in the middle of the road. Today is Wednesday, January 3rd, 2020. I almost said 2023, it's 2024. Holy crap. And I've been back home for about 30 minutes or so and uh, making something to eat. It was a very long drive. It's nice to be back after driving all that, but man, it was so much warmer there. Like five to 10 degrees. I mean, to me, that's a lot because the humidity was also like higher. So uh, hopefully I'll go back into Florida again, especially South Florida. Holy moly, what a difference. Uh, so anyway, got the microwave going. Got some leftover turkey that I'm cooking. The Christmas turkey. I had put some in the freezer, so there's plenty of that left. So cooking that, heating up some uh, cranberries, fresh cranberries, you know, in the microwave. So got to eat after driving. It's a long drive. It's like four and a half, five hours. <laughs> My goodness. And that was only when I got to where I needed to go. But then I ended up venturing further south once i got to my destination which was another couple hours then i turned around i'm done i'm done driving for a while now i gotta go eat something i feel much better after that walk because when i eat i gotta walk and i just had my leftover frozen turkey that i prepared on christmas day which has been sitting in my freezer for you know since then and it just feels good to you know psychologically and physically to to do my steps after eating and uh, especially being in the car that long. I, I, yeah, I got some steps, had to charge the Tesla. Um, and of course my bladder wouldn't let me drive more than an hour. <laughs> it's like, I had to keep stopping. So I had a, like I said, I, I, I might've said, Emma, I probably already mentioned that, but yeah, it's a lot of stops. Other than that, uh, definitely much cooler here. It's in the fifties right now. And in Florida, it was, uh, especially the, the part of Florida I was in, further south, it was seven, It was about 72 to 75 degrees the whole time I was there. So, and I've been away since uh, the New Year's Eve day, the day before New Year's. I, I hit the road. I mean, I, I made a video, it was like around 11.45 a.m. that day on Christmas, uh, New Year's Eve day. And I was out the door by around one o'clock and like 1 p.m. I was, I, I hit the road. <laughs> by the time I got there, the sun was starting to set. <laughs> it's like, oh, you know, that's kind of how that is. Like the days are getting shorter, but uh, I felt the temperature go up and up and up for every like hour that I'm driving. I'm like, oh, this is nice. Oh, this is really nice. You know, I'm, even though it's getting later, it's getting warmer too. You know, it's still getting warmer. But, uh. I'm gonna miss uh I'm gonna miss that Tesla because you know I was like I stopped did a supercharge you know had relieved my bladder and everything but uh two more days that's it the Tesla will no longer be mine I will not have a Tesla in the garage two more days two more days buyer buyer is coming in two more days and unfortunately the amount that they're paying me is less than what I owe on it but it's only by, by like $2,300, which I mean, that's a lot of money. But when I say only is because it could be a lot more that I would have to owe. I'm just gonna put it on the credit card so that I could be able to release the title to the new owner because they won't budge, you know, unless they have all their money. I know it's kind of a rocky road leading into 2024 with uh, what was happening to me, you know, having to go to the doctors and hospital. And I do have a, an appointment with my cardiologist. So that's coming up. And uh, then, of course, now I got like two more appointments. So I got to get a CT scan done again. Then they pushed my colonoscopy until next month because they didn't want to do that until I got clearance from the heart doctor after what recently happened. And then, of course, we don't want to have a CT scan happening too close together on a colonoscopy. And oh, what a mess. But, you know, that's what's happening here. Made it back here, had my turkey, did my walk back in the house. Cold outside, I'm telling you, it just makes me want to 
head back south again, you know. But uh, luckily, I had a good friend of mine who uh, helped provide accommodations because this friend of mine who lives in Florida has, has a place that's out in the further south in Florida. And I stayed there for a couple nights, then uh, decided it was time to come back because I need to. I got to sell my Tesla in two days. I got I to gotta clean it out. I got I got so many things to do and I got to figure out what I'm going to do for transportation in the meantime. I do have my bicycle. I am close enough to the stores that, you know, sometimes I walk to the store. Uh, I got everything I need in walking distance. I mean, I walk five to 10 miles a day without even worrying, like thinking about it. It's not a big deal. You know, I, I try to get my 15 to 20,000 steps each day. Going to the store on a bike is easy peasy. You know, there's a bike trail. I just hit that bike trail and and I'm right at the store. It's it's crazy how fast I could be at a Walmart, you know, or grocery store, just uh, hitting the bike trail, you know? Just gotta go through the woods, over the river, through the woods, hit the bike trail, go down the road, and then boom. And as far as transportation to going to my doctor's appointments and you know, all these appointments that I have lined up, my health insurance does cover transportation such as renting an Uber, but it's only for certain procedures and there's a limit. But my neighbors, you know, they're retired and they told me, cause I was talking to them about like how I'm getting rid of my Tesla and uh, you know, it's just, things are changing. And they told me whenever I need to go to the doctors to let them know, they will bring me to the doctors, you know? And I said, I didn't want to dump that on them. You know what I mean? It's not like I'm going to the doctors every single day. You know, this is, you know, a few times a month, maybe five times a month at the most. But, you know, things are going to slow down as far as doctor visits once we get past these numerous different tests and then follow-ups on these tests because every test has a follow-up. And it's like it never fails. There's always a follow-up on it. I do have some work that I might be able to do for a friend. It's some electrical work. Now, this may be enough to get me that vehicle. It may just be enough to get me that vehicle, but we'll see. I can't just count my chickens before they hatch. So we'll see if I end up doing this electrical work. If not, you know, it's gonna play it by ear. There is a friend of mine who lives in this neighborhood and uh, he's a security officer at one of these companies and they need some help. They actually need someone to work there. He says, you know what, you know, you would, he told me, he said, I would be perfect for that job because I, I'm, I'm fit. And he said, you know, if you ever want a security job, he said, I can, he can get me into that. And he says, I have the door on the West Wing. You can have the door in the East Wing. I'm like, <laughs> we'll see, you know, because I really want to do something that's more rewarding, you know, but if I have to do security to, to make ends meet, I would have transportation because I would just ride with my friend and share a vehicle. We have, I don't have to worry about transportation, then save up money until I get something. But that's another option that could be on the table, but there's no guarantee, no guarantee because with everything that's going on, with me having to run you know, every 45 minutes or so because of my bladder, you think someone's gonna hire me as a security officer if I have to keep like relieving my bladder every 45 minutes to an hour? Like I have to leave the post? Is that gonna work? So uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. Well, we'll see what happens. I got a few things that I'm gonna be selling out of my garage. Got a generator, got a washer and dryer that I get rid of. So uh, there's some things I get rid of. And when I save up enough, I'm going to get me just a, just a little beater card, something to get around. You know, I don't want to, it doesn't have to be anything nice. It's not like, I, you know, I, 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 this is the thing. You have something too nice, you worry about parking it. You don't know where to park it because you're afraid it's going to get dinged. Somebody's going to scratch it. Somebody thinks you got money if you got a Tesla and they treat you, you know, with disrespect. And, and, and I'm just like poor guy driving a Tesla, <laughs> don't even have the money that the Tesla represents. And people think that I have all this money and I could afford to repair a scratch or a dent or something that they deliberately do just because they don't like people that are rich when I'm not. It's just that it's an illusion because I'm driving that kind of car that people think rich people drive. But uh, that's not how it really is, right? So, uh, 
I'm tired of, it's another thing, I was tired of driving a vehicle that gives the wrong impression, you know. It gives the illusion that I am successful and it's, it's a very misleading kind of vehicle to drive when, when you are, when you're struggling to make ends meet and, you know, even like why, why, if I wanted to have a Y membership, I can have a, a free Y membership because of my income. There's a lot of things that I can qualify for. So, you know, I have no business keeping a Tesla. You know what I mean? It's the, the insurance is insane. Absolutely crazy. I have to be practical. I got to think about it. Keep kicking that can down the road, owning a vehicle you really have no business owning. And then people are getting the wrong impression when they see you driving somewhere. And then if they do something to your car, because some people are like Tesla haters and you have a high deductible on your insurance policy because it makes it cheaper. So then you cannot afford to have the paint repaired because you know how much a Tesla costs to fix a paint job just for somebody scratching more money than I I'll probably make it a whole year. You know what I mean? So that's something that I can't keep gambling with. You know, like 2024 is a, is a fresh new start. It's about managing my, my anxiety. Health anxieties, they are horrifying. And financial anxieties and anxieties about somebody doing something to your Tesla. Especially if you don't have the money to repair it because the deductible on your insurance would be so high. And then if you did make a claim, then your insurance would go up. So it's like this is slowing me down from finding a job somewhere because then I won't have to worry about parking in a parking lot and having that fear that, you know, someone's going to cause more damage than I would ever make from the job that I'd be parked at, you know, where the Tesla would be sitting. That's one of the, the biggest anxieties right there is, where am I going to work if somebody does hire me? Because I've been applying for every job because I'm desperate at this point, especially now, January. I don't know what's happened with January. January is just, a, it's, it's just tough. You know, the start of the year is very tough for me financially. It's just, but I, I got to stay positive. But the thing is, all these places, like if I end up getting a job somewhere in a grocery store, which I, I desperately did apply because they're like, you got to do what you have to do. You know, I'm overly qualified for that kind of thing. I could be doing electrical work. Thing is, you have your car sitting out in the parking lot. And if you happen to have one of those vehicles that could be a target for someone to do something to it, you know, vandalize it. I feel like a Tesla is on the list of targeted cars because especially when people have this mindset where where they think the government is trying to push EVs, you know, like people are saying, the government is pushing EVs down my throat. I don't want an EV. And so they take it out on people who have EVs because they're, oh, well, you're just, you're just a sheep following the government because the government's pushing for all these EVs, right? And so, you know, we don't want to be told what to do. We don't want to be told we have to have an EV. So just imagine when I mean, you got people that just want to be independent and they see you driving an EV, they're going to think that you're caught up in that whole, like, being under control of the government. Well, look at that guy. Like, he's got an EV. He's got a Tesla. He's giving in to, to the government. He's just going to let them control him. And so now he's driving the EV. And some people just have these mixed opinions about it. And this is the stuff I hear out in, in the media, you know. So it worries me driving that kind of vehicle. Because I'm not think I don't think about, you know, me having a, a, a Tesla, which is an EV. I'm not driving one because the government said, you know, they're, they're trying to push EVs and, and outlaw gas vehicles. You know, they're trying to outlaw the ice. You know, it's like, this is going to be it. It's only going to be the EVs. You know, I am not falling on that bandwagon. I just wanted the, the Tesla because it was practical. I didn't have to stop at the gas stations. And I love the launch. I love the power, the G-Force. It just feels like I'm taking off on a rocket. You know, I got that feeling in my my fancy sports cars, my Tesla, you know, my Corvettes and stuff. And Corvette is not practical, you know, but a Tesla, I can pack a lot of stuff in there. It can, you know, it's just much more practical and not have to stop at gas stations. But that's the way society has become. They see you in a Tesla and they think you're conforming to the government that's trying to shove Teslas and EVs down people's throats and you're just giving in. Or they might just have a problem with you and think that you're like part of this cult or something. I don't know. It. And you're like trying to push EVs down everybody else's throats and people are like trying to get away from that. So I saw the value of like EVs go down. I'm like, well, damn. 
That's why it's harder for me to sell my Tesla because the value went down because people don't want to be told what to drive. People want to drive what they want. They don't want to have the government say, well, you need to drive an electric car. You can't drive gas. You know, we're going to outlaw gas. And people don't want to hear that. So people are going to say, nope, you know what? That makes them want to have a gas vehicle more and more. You know, it's just, it's just the way people are. And unfortunately, I have that in my conscience while I'm driving, thinking that somebody might think I have the vehicle for the wrong reason, thinking I'm conforming to, you know, like this, I'm giving in or whatever. No, it's not why, but you have that Tesla parked in the parking lot while you're working at some job that's easily accessible by other people who park. They're going to see that and they're not going to know. They're going to think, oh, well, one, this person's rich. They got a lot of money. They got a Tesla. And, and number two, the government's shoving Teslas down our throats. We hate this whole thing. And this person seems to like it. So we're going to scratch it with a key. We're going to break the glass. We're going to poke holes in the tires. You don't know what people are going to do. If I had a beater car, maybe just a Toyota Camry, something that's not too fancy, I feel like I'll blend in. I'm not going to stand out. I'm not going to be a target. My vehicle's not going to be a target. It's not going to be a sore thumb. Then no matter where I work, I'm not going to worry about the Tesla in the parking lot all the time because it's going to be a car that nobody's really going to pay attention to. That way I can work my shift, not worry about, you know, having to have insurance claims or, you know, paying for damages. I'll just have a vehicle that people just don't even notice. I feel better that way if that's what, you know, I end up doing soon because sooner or later it's going to happen because either that or I'll just continue to walk. You know, there is a couple places that I can run my bike to for employment. You know, once I, my Tesla is out of my hands in two days and I have no vehicle, I'm gonna, it's going to be the old days, me riding my bike to work if I get a job somewhere in the meantime. If not, you know, I just hope crypto does really good. And I mean, it's going to have to 10x. It's going to have to do so good. The stock market is going to have to do so good. And maybe I can pull out some money and get me a, you know, a car for like $1,500 or something something cheaper, and then work my way back up slowly. Got to stay positive. And this is, this is very doable. This is doable. I can do this. I feel like the burden will be lifted for me once I sell the Tesla and I no longer have the anxieties of there being potential vandalism to it or damage, or even just the battery catching fire. I have so much anxiety about the batteries and those things catching fire because I don't have as much insurance on my home as I should. I only, you know, I had so many updates but I only have it covered for the value of the mortgage. I don't have it above that. So anything above that is because I did updates. And so I would be out of those updates and all the upgrades and everything I added to it. It's just a rocky road, but I don't want to get into all this financial stuff, but I'm just trying to be realistic about how the world has changed and how you can be judged by what you drive, what you wear, how you talk, how you walk, what you eat, uh, your, your weight, how tall you are, everything. People can judge you for that. And yeah, does it really matter what they think of you? No, but when it starts to affect you financially, where somebody's going to vandalize your vehicle, slash your tires, you know, it would cost me almost $2,000 to replace all four tires on that vehicle. I can't keep going through tires. And that's another thing. It eats up rubber so much because it's a heavy vehicle. So I think my first big practical decision that I had made was to sell that Tesla in 2024. And here we are, two more days. And farewell to the Tesla. Farewell to the burden, the worries, everything that comes along with it. This is not a negative video. This is a positive video. This is a positive new start. This is me letting go of what represents somebody else. The Tesla represents me when it comes to strength and power and speed and endurance. But all the political bullshit that's, that's, that seems to be, you know, involves with the EVs and Teslas and other electric vehicles. There's so much of that out there that it's just, it's clouding people's minds. So you're not seeing it the way I see it. And people are not seeing it the way some other people are, are seeing it who are owning such vehicle for their own reasons and not because of some kind of political agenda. You know what I mean? So that's where I'm going with this. I'm trying to get out of that mess because I don't want to, I just want to lay low and not have a vehicle that's going to draw that attention. Do you blame me? Huh? And then nobody's going to have to worry about gold diggers. Like gold diggers, you know, they'll see me for what I am, riding a bicycle and then maybe riding around in a $2,000, you know, used Toyota Cam Camry, which eventually I'd work my way up to something that will last longer. But hey, whatever, you know, Toyotas can last a long time. 
You know what I mean? The, the, the car market dropped down. It cooled off a whole lot. So you can get a used car a lot cheaper than you could have gotten a couple years ago. So things are cheaper now. Yeah, so that's what I'm going to do. Anyway, all of you are amazing. I hope you stay safe out there. Um, I probably got to go for my second walk. Probably going to put my jacket on. My Arnold Schwarzenegger Terminator jacket, whatever you want to call it. Put that on. Do my walking so that I can uh, maybe think that I'm back in Florida. Especially south part of Florida. We'll see how that goes. Now it's time to unwind. And tomorrow is going to be an early start. By then, the available balance on my credit card should be enough to cover the $2,300 that I would need to pay towards the balance due on the Tesla. So when the buyer sends them the wire transfer, that will zero out the balance. Then I just got to sign some documents, some papers online and all that stuff. And we're going to be signing all kinds of things. And then finally, uh, the Tesla will be going to a new owner. So the day after tomorrow is the day the buyer will have my Tesla. So it kind of sucks because it's like I'm paying $2,300 from my credit card, which I'm going to have to pay back in monthly installments to sell my Tesla. And I'm not getting anything in return for it, except for walking away, not having to uh, be stuck with paying car insurance and, and all that. You know what I mean? So it's, I guess it's my, my fee that I have to pay to, to get out of the obligation of keeping the Tesla, the costs of keeping it, the maintenance of the tires, you know, it's basically the main thing is the tires, expensive, and uh, the insurance, which is ridiculous, you know, it's ridiculous. Uh, and of course, the payments on them, you yeah, add that all up together. I mean, that would put more food on the table for me. That's like less money going out each month so that I'm able to kind of kick the can further down the road, I guess you want to call it that. So, uh, that's one less uh, burden for the meantime. So, yeah, it's going to be one of those, like, I don't know. I'm going to have mixed emotions, you know. I kind of take it for granted that I got a Tesla, and I, I would just go in there, and if I need to go somewhere, I just go to the store and not think about it, you know, not think about having to ride a bike on a rainy day or worrying about how I'm feeling that day, if I got a headache or whatever, you know. But uh, a lot of the food I get anyway, I do have delivery luckily they do delivery to your door and it doesn't cost any more so unless it's something i specifically need and i don't need to shop for a lot of stuff because usually the way it is when you have your like deliveries from these grocery stores there would be a minimum order for free delivery otherwise you have to pay a delivery fee so if i just need one thing i'm gonna have to run the store but in the meantime you know i get stuff delivered to the house in grocery bags, you know, right from the store. They just bring it here. And uh, I, like I said, the doctor thing, it's my neighbors. They enjoy my company. It's like they like me to come over for holidays, come visit, go out to eat with them once in a while. So uh, they want to bring me to the doctor. So I'm not going to say no. I'm going to need to ride anyway. So it'll all it'll all work out until I get back on my feet. I'm hope I'm keeping my fingers crossed that. I'll be able to do some of this electrical work and uh, see if I can get this, uh, see if this position is still going to be available for like a security job at this business, this company. Who knows? You know, let's we'll see if they'll tolerate my bladder problems. <laughs> we'll see where that goes. If, you know, I'll have to talk to, talk to my friend tomorrow about that. But first I got to deal with the whole Tesla thing. Uh, yeah. Anyway, I hope all of you stay safe. You know, like I said, I'm doing what I can to make 2024 less stressful and got to get rid of some of these weights on my shoulders, you know, just so I can, so I'm not held back. No time to be held back. Got to, got to get rid of the burdens, you know, it's time for a fresh start. And, and the next step might be downsizing this house, but as long as I'm still breathing air and not dirt, that's, that's all that matters, right? That's all that matters, but stay safe.